this calculus problem, we want to find the limit of this function as x approaches 7. Now what I notice first is we have x squared minus 49 in the numerator of this fraction. 49 is the same thing as 7 squared, because 7 times 7 is 49. Now this is the difference between two squares, and there's an algebra rule that says x squared minus a squared is equal to x plus a times x minus a. And since we have x squared minus 7 squared, I can take this and put it in the form x plus 7 times x minus 7. Now in the denominator, I notice that we have an x in common with each term. So I can reverse distribute this x, giving me x times x minus 7. Now from here, notice that the two x minus 7s will cancel. So our limit will look like this, and now we can just take this 7 and plug it in for x. So x plus 7 over x will become 7 plus 7 over 7. 7 plus 7 is 14, and 14 divided by 7 is 2. So the answer to this limit is 2. This calculus problem looks complicated at first, but it's really not too bad. So in this problem, we are given the graph of a function, and we are asked if this function is continuous at x equals 1. Our first step is going to be to find the limit of our function as x approaches 1. I can see that an x value of 1 is right there, so if I start on our curve from the left side, I can approach this value of x equals 1, and I end up at an output of 2. And if I approach this from the right side, I can see that I also end up at an output of 2. So that means the solution to our limit is 2. Now our next step for solving this problem is to evaluate f of 1. I can start at an x value of 1. Now if I look at our curve, notice there's a hole in the graph right there. So I need to go past this hole and go up to the nearest solid point. The output of this solid point is going to be at 4. So this right here is the limit and the function evaluated at 1. But because these numbers do not match, this automatically tells us that we do not have a continuous function at x equals 1. Not many people can solve this calculus problem. So here we are given a function, and we're asked which of the four statements below is correct. Now to solve this problem, I'm going to start by taking the derivative of our function. The 18 is not going to change, but the derivative of cosine comes out to negative sine. So we end up getting negative 18 times the sine of x for our derivative. And from here, I'm going to take every place that I see x and replace it with pi over 6. The sine of pi over 6 radians is 1 half, and 1 half of 18 is 9. So the solution to our problem is negative 9, and this matches with option C. So let's say that you're given this function. f of x is equal to 20 x plus 10 times the sine of x. We want to calculate the derivative of this function evaluated at pi. Now, to calculate this, I'm first going to find the derivative of the function with respect to x. The derivative of 25x, well, that x is just going to derive off. So all we're going to have is 25. And then what I will do is add this to the derivative of 10 times the sine of x. 10 is just a constant, so that's going to remain. And the derivative of the sine of x is the cosine of x. This is just something you're going to have to know. So now that I have my derivative, I want to evaluate this derivative when x is equal to pi. So 25 is just going to remain 25 in this equation, and then we're going to add this to 10 times the cosine of pi. The cosine of pi, that's equal to negative 1. So what we'll have is negative 1 times this 10. So this equation is going to be 25 plus negative 10 or minus 10, and 25 minus 10 is 15. So 15 is the answer to the problem. Let's see how fast we can solve this calculus problem. We are asked to find the derivative of this function h of x. Now I notice that we have two functions of x in the top and bottom of a fraction. For these situations, you can use something called the quotient rule, which looks like this. Now f prime, that's going to be the derivative of the top of the fraction, which in this case is the derivative of sine. The derivative of sine is cosine. Now g corresponds to the bottom of the fraction, which is just x to the fourth power. Now we're going to subtract off the derivative of g, which is the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of x to the fourth, we can find by using the power rule. Doing this, you should get 4x to the third power. This is then multiplied by f, which is just the sine of x. Now our last step is to divide this all by g squared. That's going to be the denominator squared, which is just x to the fourth squared. And x to the fourth squared, multiplying these two values, that's the same as x to the eighth. So this is the unsimplified derivative and the answer to the problem. In this calculus problem, we want to evaluate this indefinite integral. So this is a problem where you're going to need to use u substitution. So what I'm going to do is take the sine of x here, and I'm going to set it equal to u. Now when you do a u substitution, what you want to do is take the derivative of u. So what I'm going to do is take the derivative of this sine term, which is cosine. And since I took the derivative of the sine of x, I'm going to show that this derivative was taken with respect to x. Notice after taking this derivative, I can now replace the cosine x dx in this integral with du. 
So all I need to do is integrate u with respect to u, and I can do this pretty simply using the integral power rule. I'll add one to the exponent and then divide by that exponent. So this indefinite integral is going to become u squared divided by two plus the constant of integration c. And now that we've integrated this, our last step would be to replace this u with the sine x that we substituted in the first place. So u squared over two plus c would become sine squared x over two plus c, and that is the answer to the problem.